Christer Larsson, who is the city planning director for the city of Malmo, Sweden. He studied architecture at the School of Architects of the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Stockholm. And in 1998, he started to work for the city of Malmo uh, in the planning office and is today the director of Malmo City Planning Office. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would say that uh, I think that conferences like this is very important. Uh, where you can share knowledge and, and where you also can have new ideas and, and meet each other. So I'm very appreciate that you inv invited me, so thank you very much for that. Uh, my name is Christer Larsson. I'm from Sweden. That's a Scandinavian country. Uh, a familiar name is Switzerland, but this is Sweden, you know, Scandinavia. Uh, I'm the director of city planning, which means that I'm an architect. Uh, I'm also the chairman of the Nordic City Network. Uh, so I uh, recommend you to, to um, uh, visit the website of the Nordic City Network because that is another lecture. But we are trying to understand city planning from uh, software, from humanistic values, uh, such as culture, attractiveness, innovation, etc. So uh, I would like to say something about the background of Malmö, uh, an old industrial city which is really changing. Uh, we have a strong force from, say, in the beginning of 1990s. We lost 30,000 job places at that time, so we were almost dead, and that was not so nice. Uh, and and we, we made visionary work at that time to, to sort out what we are going to look for in the future. So we go for the new knowledge-based economy, and we are trying to be as attractive as possible. Uh, we also decided that we should make the city carbon neutral in uh, 2030. Uh, we were quite active at the COP15 at 2009. And at that time, we have reduced the carbon dioxide from uh, 1990 to 2009 with 25%. And at the same time, we have uh, also expanded the city with 50,000 new inhabitants. So that's quite good. We have a strategy. And, and that consists of many parts, but you can say we have energy production, uh, and that is windmills, and it's also biogas, and we drive our buses with biogas. We are experimenting a lot with solar energy. It's not giving so much today, but I think it will in the future. And it's also a matter of how we behave. And, and you, you can see the, the man bicycling there, and we have a campaign, uh, silly short car rides, uh, in Malmö, 50% of all car rides are shorter than three kilometers, and that's stupid, you know. So we have a big windmill plant, 48 windmills, sea-based. I think it's one of the largest in the world. We are working to make it uh, uh, visual. Uh, we are uh, trying to integrate uh, solar cells and panels into the buildings. But it's also a matter of how we are designing and constructing the building. So we have a program for that. And for the moment, we are building the largest passive house area in, in Sweden. And I mean, there is also a question for us planners to do something new. The left-hand side, you can see the modernistic way of planning. And the right-hand side, you can see the modern way of planning, more spaghetti structures, mixed and dense and much more complex than before. In that case, the planning, in the planning issue, the transportation system is important. And Malmö is a dense city. Uh, we live 4,000 people per square kilometers, and it's a core value for us to keep the city dense. And we're investing a lot in infrastructure. And as you know, we are connected with Denmark with a bridge and also now with a drilled tunnel. We will invest in a tramway system, in a new a railway ring around the city center, and we are also trying to make the city more mixed, more green, more dense, which is the main purpose with our new comprehensive plan. And uh, we are trying to, um, to uh, give place for approximately 100,000 new inhabitants into the city pattern without taking any new land in, into to the structure. Uh, you know, we are uh, surrounded by agricultural land, which is important for us. So this is something that is really important for us. We are always showing this picture because to be a sustainable and attractive city, that's our main idea. 
And we are always treating sustainability with three parameters, as you all do. But I think there is something very interesting going on now in how we are conceptualizing the sustainable idea. But I think we have to come back to that another time. But we are always trying to define whatever we do in the city planning, what values do we have to create on this certain spot, and we also take our background in the sustainability issue. But there's also many ideas that we have to implement in our way of planning. And I mean, we have new infrastructures, new lifestyles, and I had invented something myself, which I call the fourth urban space. Uh, and we have done that in the Nordic city, and we have written about that as well. And you can read about that on the website. But I mean, the new lifestyles is important for us. When we say we have a mixed and dense city, well, that is in a way to, to meet the demands from new lifestyles. And as you see, you can work on different, in different ways, the old way and the new way, so to say. And when we are talking about lifestyles and the urban spaces, which is very important, and it's important to have a strategy for that, uh, you can say that the fourth city space is an innovative and expansive space, and it's very much related to the interaction between the urban spaces and the buildings. And I also have a discussion uh, where we uh, say that how, how much of the attractiveness should the cars be allowed to take in the urban spaces, and that's also another discussion. The best thing we've done so far is the Western Harbor. It's, it's very um, known, mainly international known, uh, and uh, that is the, the first climate smart city part in, in Sweden. It's 100% uh, renewable, locally produced energy sources. And uh, this is the exhibition from uh, 2001, and, and we are still proceeding and we are planning new areas. And uh, today we are, as I said, planning the largest um, passive house area. Let's see. Uh, the, the exhibition area is here. The turning tolls are the new symbol for the city. And this is the old shipyard, uh, a brownfield area. Unfortunately, it, it, it wasn't so brown as we hoped, uh, because we, we tried to demonstrate new ways of cleaning the soil uh, with, with trees, for example. And in, in this spot today, we are planning the passive house area. And we are now also planning the old shipyard area here. And that, that area would go for a BREEAM certificate for the, the city part as a whole. Uh, this area of the housing expo, it demonstrates in a very good way that sustainable cities, they are very beautiful and they are convenient to live in. They have good architecture and it's beautiful to live there, and it's very convenient. And there are also a lot of green things. We work with green space factor, uh, which we still are working with in all our plans. And we worked a lot with green dots in, in biodiversity, and we worked also very much with storm water, and we tried to find a very good eco-cycle uh, system uh, where we have biogas, for example, for, for the buses. Our next question is how we should meet the agricultural land. I mean, the question of how we should pr produce uh, all, all the vegetables and, and that thing uh, is, is a big issue. Uh, so uh, we are trying to find a boundary which we don't uh, plan outside, and that's the ring road. So all our planning today uh, is, is um, uh, inside this, in, this ring road, and that's important for us. Uh, we are also, as I said, a part of a region, uh, a cross-border region, uh, Denmark to the left and Sweden to the right. And we, we have two very um, talented majors. My major, Ilma Repalu, he is an architect, and that's not so bad for me. Uh, and um, uh, we have the commission to work with master planning, comprehensive planning, and also green growth. So uh, we believe that uh, to dealing with this, this issue, the sustainable issue, it, it's important also in, in economical growth. I mean, uh, uh, new lifestyles, they demand that the city should be sustainable. Otherwise, they would choose to live in another city. And, and uh, that's not good for, for, for us. So I would say that we are proceeding and we are still trying to produce attractive ideas. And um, here you can see the Western Harbor again, but it's a, it's a, a, a design sketch. 
and we had to do something to uh, deal with the rise of the seawater. And, and to do that, we are planning some new islands outside Malmö, and at the same time, uh, add some new attractiveness. And we are trying to say that on these islands you should live, and they could also produce energy in a way, and you should transport to and on them in a new way. We don't really know how, but uh, we are quite sure that this is something that is really interesting and also important for us to show that we still have good ideas to develop our city. Thank you.